Hello, everyone, and welcome to an Extivia webinar, delivering the information you need for the business future you want. We're sharing our knowledge to help your business thrive in today's new normal. My name is Alex Killian, and I'm the video producer here on Extivia's marketing team. To tell you just a little bit about Extivia before we dive into the webinar this morning, for nearly three decades, we've been providing a variety of expert IT services to hundreds of businesses in countless industries. If you can imagine the business outcome, Extivia can create it with technology. And today we'll be hearing from some of our Microsoft experts. Joining us today is our VP of, Gov of our GovCon division, Paul Skirbsky. Paul is widely regarded in government contracting circles as one of the industry's true experts on government contracting financial management solutions. Paul is responsible for new client acquisition activities for the company. He has a process improvement and enterprise systems background with over 10 years experience in delivering and managing enterprise inventory and financial management solutions. With his technical background, Paul specializes in understanding clients' needs and using software solutions to help them reach their business goals. Paul, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thanks, Alex. Thanks for the kind words. Oh, definitely. And also joining us today is sales executive Mark Lahart. Mark is a seasoned sales professional helping his clients evaluate new ERP and accounting solutions for their organizations. For the past 19 years, he has been focused on Microsoft Dynamics, 11 years with Extivia, and eight years with the largest Microsoft partner worldwide. He has a proven ability to work with clients with complex requirements and strives to produce solutions with the results intended to meet his clients' objectives. His background and years of experience working with many clients within different industries allow him to consult with his customers on the technology solutions available today to meet their needs. Mark, thank you so much for joining us also. Thanks, Alex. Glad to be here. So, uh, Paul, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what our webinar covers this morning? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome or good morning to everybody on today's webinar. Uh, today's webinar is on Microsoft Dynamics 365 for government contractors. Uh, the Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central solution is a full enterprise solution that's focused on three main vertical markets, distribution, manufacturing, and professional services. Extivia has extended this solution specifically for government contractors in those vertical areas with our, government con with our GovCon 365 suite of products. Our solutions provide the advanced capabilities and compliance features that make it a great fit for any government contract. So what we have is the uh, next set of the webinar series. Today we're gonna to be focused on contract manufacturing. Last week we did uh, a webinar series on Azure. So Microsoft's Azure cloud environment. In July, we're going to be focused on Power BI, which is Microsoft's analytics reporting tool. Uh, then the following one will be Dynamics 365, which is uh, their sales module, which is CRM. And then in the end of August, we're going to be focused on licensing, helping you get through the maze of understanding Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365. Uh, the licensing uh, for those applications. And at any time, you can go visit our website and see not only these uh, webinars, the series uh, that are coming up, but you can uh, go back and look at the ones that we've had and previously recorded. So a little bit about our expertise here with the Microsoft family. Uh, we really help companies in the small to mid market space here with the uh, Dynamics 365 uh, ERP platform. And as Paul mentioned, these companies can be uh, ranging from professional services companies, contract manufacturers, distributors. That's what the Microsoft Dynamics 365 product is. It's a mid market ERP uh, application. It's been around for about 20 years. Uh, started out uh, as uh, Navision, uh, recently was Business Central, uh, Dynamics 365. So it's had some renaming uh, iterations as it's uh, as it's matured here. Product also has a uh, human resources module that's available, 
Power BI again is with, within the reporting platform. Uh, and then database management, we can help you with uh, Office products, SQL Server migrations. We can help you with uh, any applications, maybe a legacy environments, taking you from uh, you know your uh, in-house support here in your IT environment, move it up to Azure, uh, support you with Azure SQL Server. We're also experts in Azure Government Cloud and the uh, Office 365 GCC High environments. We can help navigate you to, uh, to qualify uh, in those environments here with Microsoft. So again, a little bit about Dynamics 365 Business Central, the product uh, that we're going to be focused on today more in the contract manufacturing, but this is a full suite application uh, classified as an ERP, which is enterprise resource planning for the small to mid market, but has a lot of clients across the world, companies that are doing project-based work, inventory and distribution work, contract manufacturing, um, at 140,000 clients. This is the most widely used mid-market application uh, in the in the world today, uh, even more than all of our competitors uh, combined. So it is also Microsoft's number one ERP application. Uh, what that means to you as a client is the majority of their R&D dollars are getting fed back into this application because of the large uh, client base that they have. Uh, it has a couple different license models. So you can license this to be in Microsoft's Azure Cloud environment. You can also purchase an on-premise uh, version of this software. So if you wanted to install this in your environment, on your servers, or put it into a third-party hosting facility, you can do that. And again, we can also help you uh, put this in the Azure Gov Cloud environment. Uh, it is a product meeting your NIST 800-171 compliance, ITOR, CMMC. So it is compliance uh, within the application and the environment here. Uh, and then the other uh, area here around 365 is, you know, a lot of companies, most organizations are already using Office 365, and they may be using Power BI as an option here within the uh, Office 365 environment or the CRM environment called Dynamics 365. So they're really looking at this application, Business Central, to round out their infrastructure and basically their IT strategy to be all Microsoft. Yeah, and Mark, just to add to that, uh, one of the things that we've seen as a huge benefit to our clients is that it's not only a browser-based application, you know, Microsoft's vision of being cloud first, the second part of it, mobile first, yeah, right? Yeah. So whether you're using a, an Android or an Apple device from a phone perspective or one of the tablets, you can run you know, the full application off either of those devices. So in today's world where we're not going into the office, it's great to be able to connect, you know, using my phone or using my tablet as a way to get into the system. So you know, giving people those options really has made it easier for companies to you know, survive and thrive in an environment where we can't go to the office that easily. Yeah, great point, Paul, thanks. <clears throat> so a little bit about the manufacturing capabilities here, but you know, as far as uh, really inventory items and MRP in production. So within inventory, there's standard capabilities here around, you know, item tracking, item management, uh, replenishment of your inventory, um, fully integrated with the procurement process and purchasing. There's uh, built-in workflows here to help you with all that. Um, has the ability for serial and lot tracking capabilities uh, within the inventory and full warehouse management capabilities, uh, you know, including cycle counting here as well. Uh, within MRP, you'll see uh, areas of the bill of materials, uh, capabilities around version management of items, you know, being manufactured, ECO capabilities, uh, and complete production and scheduling here, as well as capacity planning capability. And one of the things to note um, is that for our clients that have manufacturing needs, but they're government contractor also, 
it's great to have a system where manufacturing isn't an afterthought, right? So deep manufacturing capabilities, but we still have all the compliance features built into the application, as well as the ability to handle engineering or project related work. So I see oftentimes companies have to run more than one system because their needs are complex like that. Um, but you see that manufacturing is certainly not an afterthought, deep features and function. Absolutely. Great, great, Paul, thanks. So this slide right here just shows the manufacturing module within GovCon 365, and then the granular effects of this module. So you can see the breadth of the product here that's available, um, you know, from operations and planning production orders and items and inventory management, capacity planning, costing of items, right? Planning of the items here as well. So very, um, very feature rich uh, application, as you might imagine, as I mentioned, you know, it's the most widely used ERP application here in the, in the mid market. So some of the things that make up what's unique for manufacturing here for, uh, you know, for the federal government, for government contracting, things they're looking for. Certainly it's all around compliance, right? If you get an audit, you want to make sure that you pass this audit and that you have compliance, uh, compliance in place. But it's really around this contract based manufacturing, right? The capabilities to be able to track costs as they flow to uh, to a project. So, um, and those costs are flowing from, you know, the projects to a general ledger and then to the uh, production order itself. So you've got to track and manage, you know, the costs associated with these items. And then engineering, uh, engineering services. So for R&D type work or for the federal government having you build something, right, you need to check and manage the costs that are associated with these, uh, with these R&D type products. And really these are, you know, tracking the, uh, you know, whether it's cost reimbursable here and any project related inventory that goes a little R&D, you know, associated with a, uh, with a manufacturing job. Paul, well, anything you want to add? Yeah, yeah, so the one thing I'd say is that, you know, oftentimes what we've seen is that because the capabilities um, that a company needs are so broad, We've seen multiple times that people run more than one system because they can't find one solution that can handle, you know, complex manufacturing needs as well as project-based work all in one system. You know, so oftentimes they have two separate applications and either it's manually integrating data or they try to build a bridge between the two. Um, but what you're seeing here in this slide is capabilities that kind of go across the enterprise sometimes companies as small as 20 million in revenue that has very complex needs. So this solution is a great fit for, you know, that emerging company that might be 20 million, but also a company that could be 500 million in revenue. Thank you. Okay. So some of the areas, right, where Extivia has made improvements around the application here, and into our GovCon 365 solution it is really about you know connecting manufacturing, right, manufacturing capabilities to a job and tracking that, and then being able to support and track the cost with different types of jobs, whether it's a TNM type job or cost, or these are uh, fixed price type billing. Um, also, being able to track inventory costs by a project and as Paul mentioned, right, the product is great for companies that maybe aren't just solely contract manufacturing, but maybe they're a hybrid business model and they do professional services here too. So the ability that you can have both a full project accounting uh, application job costing system with time and expense tracking, all supporting DCA compliance as a, a contract manufacturer. Um, we also have relationships with other Microsofts. This is the benefit of Microsoft and their ecosystem, but some of the other capabilities from other ISVs out there are advanced shop floor controls, uh, which um, and advanced planning, but those shop floor controls can be anywhere from barcoding, quality management, further warehouse capabilities. 
that we can really uh, add to the uh, overall solution set here to meet the needs of a, of a business. Fantastic. And, and I know that uh, oh, we got a little poll up on, you know, maybe give us a little idea of the current system that you're using. Um, that way we can tailor the presentation based on that. Uh, while the poll's up, uh, you know, great points on that slide, Mark. Uh, the one thing I'll just add to it is that Mark and I were in a presentation last week with a manufacturer actually out in Colorado Springs. And the question he asked is he said, there's so many Microsoft partners that provide advanced capabilities, how do I navigate it? And that's what we help you do, right? So we know the ISV solutions out there and which ones are unique and needed for a manufacturer. And we've incorporated those in where needed to really give you a full solution um, with all the automation um, needed to run your business. All right, so it looks like uh, time for me to hop on the demo. So. I want to give you guys, today isn't meant for a full presentation. It's meant as a way to just introduce you to the solution. So what I want to start out with is a little bit of a general overview. And let me go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Oh. So the folks on the call can see it. Uh, Alex, can you uh, unshare so I can... All right, fantastic. All right, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna give you a little bit of a general overview and I'm gonna start out with, just talk a little bit about the interface. Uh, and then I'm gonna to touch on the points that Mark made. So around inventory, um, managing your bombs, uh, project-based work, some things around compliance. And then uh, if time permits, I'll touch a little bit generally on Power BI, but we've got a great Power BI webinar uh, coming up at the end of July. So the first thing you see when you log in, um, every user gets assigned a profile. So if I log in to look at my settings here, uh, what you're gonna see is that this particular user is logged in as a production planner. So every user can define uh, what is their profile, but you can also personalize that profile. So the profile determines what I see on my homepage. There's also role-based security, which controls what I can do when I log into the application. Even though, say for instance, Mark and I have the same role, maybe what's important to us is a little bit different. So we can personalize that experience and decide, you know, do you want to hide certain aspects of the system um, or add to it? Um, so maybe capacity planning isn't something that's important to me. I can go ahead and hide that or move it. And then once I click done, it's gonna save it, and now I don't see that. So it kind of reduces the clutter on my screen. If there's other aspects of the system that I get into on a regular basis, and I just wanna pin them to my homepage, so it's like setting favorites. So I can say that locations is something I get into all the time from an administrative perspective, and I can just say, I wanna bookmark this. So once I bookmark it, what happens is, when I'm on my homepage, now location shows up and I'm gonna use that later on in my demo. As I scroll down on my homepage, you're gonna see a combination of what's called activity boxes or queues. And what this allows me to do is actually drill into these to see, in this case, how many purchase orders. I've got one assigned to me, firm plan production orders, timesheets I need to open. So these activity queues just give me quick information and the ability to drill in and see the details. Each one of these links takes me to a separate part of the system. So if I want to go into my customer record, I would just click on my customer link and it launches my list of customers. You can also personalize these lists as well as drill into my activity queues. Anytime you see a number in the system and it's got a little line underneath it and you can see it says open record, what this means is I can drill into this amount. So the Adatum Corporation, they currently owe us $102,000. Maybe I want to know what is that $102,000 made up of? I can drill into that amount. It's going to take me to what's called the customer ledger. So that customer ledger shows me all the open AR. It highlights it red when it's overdue. And you can see that it actually came from some particular invoices. 
sometimes you want to actually see the detail of the invoice, you can just go ahead and click show document and that'll take me to the invoice document. If I wanted to drill across the system, I can use this navigate function. And what this would do is allow me to see from this invoice, what are all the related entries? So when the user posted the invoice, it created that posted sales document. It also hit the general ledger with two entries, the customer ledger, and because it was job related work, it also hit the job ledger. So it neatly ties that transaction and allows me to look across the entire application. We asked a question earlier about, you know, what Microsoft applications are you using? The reason why we asked is because the integration as well as from the interface, it's easy to you know, leverage the other Microsoft products. So one interface to log in. So if you're using Office 365, it's the same login. If I want to, in this case, edit data in Excel or open it in Excel, very easy to do that. Also has some great integration with Word as well as email. So I'll just quickly show you this edit in Excel concept. So I can hit the button to edit a document in Excel. And what it does is just sends the data over to Excel for me. Now in Excel, if I click on one of the cells, this is one of the fields I clicked into. If you remember earlier, that balance document or the balance record. When I look over to the right, you can see that it's highlighted red telling me you can't edit that. So I can't edit the balance that's due because it impacts the subledger. However, the credit limit is something I can edit. So if you had to edit multiple records at once, and let's say I wanted to just say that um, instead of we're going to increase this customer's credit limit by 20%, I'll just use Excel to do the math instead of me calculating it in my head. And then I'll just hit this publish button. And what the publish does is it validates that the data was entered correctly, right? So this is numeric only. If I put an alpha character in here, it would give me an error message. And you could see earlier that there was records I couldn't, you know, I wasn't allowed to update, and it highlighted those red for me. So it sends it through all the same business logic, so you don't need to worry about, you know, do you create an issue with data in a system? So now when I go back into uh, Dynamics, and let me scroll over, Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Let's go back to uh, the customer record. And what I need to do is just refresh this or sort it. And what you're going to see is the Datum Corporation's credit limit will now be updated. So let's just, we'll just sort this by number. Um, okay. And I guess it didn't publish yet, but um, it'll publish and update that credit limit for me. So very simple way to leverage the interface um, between Excel and also uh, Business Central. Uh, so that's just a little general aspects of the interface. Uh, the next thing I want to get into a little bit is the item card. So from my product design drop down, I can go into my bombs, routings, routing link codes, which is a way that I can link my routing to my production bomb, which can control inventory that's needed at a certain production step. I can link those two to tell the system what inventory is needed in case you've got a complex routing. When I go to my item list, this is gonna show me all the inventory in my demo system. So um, let me go ahead and right now it's filtered for produced items only. Let me go to all my items, which is gonna show both produced, purchased, assembled, um, any inventory uh, in that realm there. Uh, so let's go ahead, we're going to pull up our drone outer shell. So that's one of my items. It's something that we purchase. Uh, we'll pull up the item card. And what you're going to see is a couple different things. So on the right hand side, you can import images. You can also attach documents. So you're going to see that throughout the system. Information in the application is always separated by these little tabs. So I've got general item information like number description. Uh, the type of inventory. You can decide to show more or less information, and this all can be personalized by user or for the company. Uh, if I go to my inventory tab, it's going to show me information about inventory on hand as well as open POs. 
sales orders and production orders. So just like before, if I want to drill into this 46 to look at the, the specific POs and when they're coming in, I can do that. Uh, we'll skip over some of the costing and pricing information. Uh, Mark mentioned replenishment. Let's talk a little bit about replenishment in the application. So you've got the ability to set that replenishment system to purchase, produce, assemble. Transfer means you might want to transfer materials between your warehouse locations. So uh, you can control that in the application. Once you set how you want to uh, replenish, you can identify the lead time. In this case, it's purchased, and I can identify my preferred vendor, preferred vendor numbers. You can also have alternate vendor numbers. And in addition, on the vendor card, um, the system has the ability to classify your vendors. So if you need to do small business reporting and you want to identify if it's you know, foreign owned, um, any of your disadvantaged classifications, uh, so service disabled, women owned, veteran owned, um, 8A businesses, et cetera, you can control that on the vendor card. Um, if it's something you make, you can control the manufacturing policy. On the planning tab, this is telling the system when I purchase or make this, you know, some of the parameters around it. So whether it's controlled by lot parameters or you've got min-max uh, reorder quantities, you can identify that within the planning tab. On the item tracking tab, this allows me to identify if something is serial or lot tracked and when is serial or lot tracking required. So in this case, the code defined here is for serial tracking on the sales side. So when I open that, uh, that form up, you can see that the serial number is required only at the point that I'm selling the goods, either on the inbound or outbound side. Um, but these are all configurable. So whether it's the serial number side of it, the lot number side of it has the same controls, or the system has the ability to control expiration dates of inventory. So if you have certain inventory that needs to be used by a certain point or it needs to be disposed of, you can, you can track that detail as well as warranties in the system. So really, the system, the way it segregates and makes information available, makes it easy for users to control and take advantage of all the power of the system. Today's presentation is around manufacturing, so I want to touch a little bit on items that are produced. So I'm going to go to my XMAX drone, and let's open that up. Um, we won't go through the, all the entirety of the item card uh, in the presentation today. We're happy to uh, have any personalized demos for folks on the call that want to see more details about the system. When something is produced, though, um, a couple things you would do is you control the manufacturing policy, whether it's make to stock or make to order, identify if it has a routing associated with it. You know, so if you had a standard routing or a unique routing to a product, you can identify the routing. Um, in just a few minutes, I'm going to touch on the production bomb. So for my Extivia drone, um, I can control what inventory as well as version control around that, and Mark talked about the whole ECO process. From the item, if I wanted to see the details of what is it that goes into this drone, I can go up to my bill of materials and the structure, and what this shows is it's gonna be the tree that identifies how we build this XMAX drone. So it's got a webcam, it's got a processor, um, battery associated with it, the drone shell, and this has a sub-assembly to it. So you can see that you can have multiple levels to the bomb. In fact, you know, as many levels as you need. If the item had um, work centers associated, you'd see the work center and the projected amount of time. So you're seeing the quantities um, and the replenishment system on that item. You know, as I can you know, either drill up or drill down to see the detail of what makes up this particular finished good. So that touches a little bit on the item card. Now I wanna go over to the bill of material to talk a little bit about, you know, when you build the bombs, you know, some of those base capabilities. So you can see that this bomb is certified. 
Um, let's go ahead and we'll look at it in edit mode. So every one of the screens, you can look at it in edit or view mode. Um, if you're in view mode, you can't change anything. Edit mode allows me to update as needed. So I've got the, the description of that finished good, the unit of measure. So the system supports multiple units of measure across the application, um, whether it's from the purchase side, sales side, in this case, the production side um, of the particular materials. Uh, the status, so I can only have a production order fulfilled if it's under certified, but I can also have it a new bomb under development or closed. You have the ability to control versions. So you can have planned versions that might be active later on in time. Um, so that's a, a nice little way to control um, version control. The ECO process also has some great capabilities around version management. Notes across the system. You know, so I have the ability to track notes in the application. Uh, it's gonna show when the note was taken, who took that note. Um, and same concept with if I wanted to load any documents or images. Down in the body, this is the components that make up that finished good. So when we're on the item card, you saw the structure. From here, you see the component tree. If you remember that super max component, I'm showing this as an item. So you can have bombs that are either phantom bombs, um, which means it's built as part of the manufacturing process, or you could have an item that's a production bomb, which allows me to build a sub-assembly as a separate step in the manufacturing process. So when you looked at the, that structure of the bomb, though, you were able to see the depth of it in the solution. Um, so I can look at it from either perspective, either as embedded um, or a phantom bomb inside the application. So I'm not gonna go much deeper into the bomb, but just to give you an idea of the bill of material, how it's managed in the application, um, and the controls around it. So that's a little bit about the bomb process and building bill of materials. Uh, next thing I wanna go over to uh, in the application is a little bit about, uh, we're gonna go back and we'll get into capacities in the system. So you have the ability to set up both work centers and machine centers. So machine centers can build up to a work center, but the idea is you can identify in the system you know, how many uh, machines you have in that particular work center. The shop floor calendar code, this tells the system whether I'm running you know, a single shift, two shift, three shift operation, whatever it might be, you know, capacity is the number of machines in there. Uh, and then what would happen is when you run the MRP process in MPS, the system looks to see what the capacity we have is, what it takes to run a finished good through the system, and it'll tell us what is that start date needed to meet the end production date for the client. Um, so MPS and MRP both built into the system. Uh, and actually even at the point of generating a sales order, you can do just a quick check. It's called capable to promise, where a sales rep can see, based on what it takes to produce something, what can we promise that client uh, in terms of completing the production. So again, just general overview, but you get an idea of the capabilities there from building production orders um, to bombs, as well as managing capacity control in the system. So the next thing I want to touch on is that Mark talked about what's different between you know, commercial manufacturing as compared to when you manufacture for the federal government. So one of the key differences is that oftentimes when you're producing for the federal government, they might actually own the inventory. So you can purchase it for them or the government can supply inventory to you. Um, and you need to control that inventory by project. So one of the things in the system, you know, it came in handy, I add that location to the homepage so I can get to it quick. I'm gonna to go to one of my project specific inventory locations. So what we've done is we've, convict, we've connected the production side to the project side of the system. So within the location card, 
we identify the job as well as the work breakdown structure related to that inventory. <clears throat> so now what happens is anytime we receive goods for a particular project, that cost, or I mean, I should say for a, a production order, the cost not only goes to the general ledger, it's also going to flow through to the project. So if you have cost reimbursable manufacturing projects where you're not billing it based on a fixed unit cost, that inventory can flow through to the job, and then the billing can be done by fixed unit price, TM, or cost reimbursable against the job. So connecting that job to manufacturing, if you do prototypes, oftentimes companies that have SBIR contracts, um, they need to build some prototypes for the government. So they still need to do manufacturing, but it's project-based manufacturing. So this is one of the key ways how we connect that manufacturing process to a job. So I wanna go over to the job a little bit because I know some of the folks on the call, um, based on the system you're on, you're probably doing some services work in addition to manufacturing work. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna change my profile here just to give you a sense of how it looks a little bit different. And I'm gonna go in as a, a project-based resource. All right, so <clears throat> as it's refreshing, you know, now I see you know, different information on my homepage. I'm gonna go into my job record. You also have the ability to track contracts in the system. Um, so kind of end-to-end -end capabilities for your enterprise. So when I go into the job side of the system, some of the things that you see over on the, the right-hand side, this fact box. So some information that you might need to track about your government contracts, that contract value, how much of it's funded, uh, commitments, which are open POs for that job. And all this information uh, gives me the ability to actually drill into it. So I can drill into the detail to see information about that particular record. Um, so let's open up one of these jobs and I'm just gonna give you a, about a, a 60 second uh, debrief on some of the information related to jobs. So when I go to the, the government contracting tab, you know, some critical information that we've added. So the ability to support cost plus, whether it's fixed fee, incentive fee or award fee contracts from a revenue and a billing perspective, uh, tracking that in the system and having it all automated so you don't need to do it offline. Um, you know, other setups for cost reimbursable contracts, how you recover your indirects. So this can be either using your corporate rate structure or you can have a rate structure specific to that job. Uh, the fee that you earn, tracking the type of contract. So if you need to do an incurred cost submission, it's a critical piece of reporting uh, back to the government. The contract number, if you need to put that on the invoice to the government. Other data, contracting office and paying office. Uh, in addition, if you need to send out an invoice and it's on the, the DD-250 or the 1034 and 1035, uh, within the billing side, we're able to produce that invoice using the government format, or you could have a format that's unique to your business. So really gives you that ability to um, set things up to help you to be efficient. You don't have to do stuff offline. So when I, I'll open up this invoice document real quick, and I'll just touch on, uh, yeah, also has electric document control, but if I needed to uh, print it off on a government format, if I can find it here. Um, so if I need to print it off on one of those forms, uh, you can do that within the system. So again, you know, trying to keep everything in the system, not have to manage it outside of the application. Uh, so that's a little bit about jobs. I guess the last thing I'll touch on with a job is just that ability to track a work breakdown structure. So similar to Microsoft Project, um, We've got in Business Central, the WBS, uh, and the ability to track that in the application. Uh, we've got the ability to control alerts. So if you need to let the government know at 75% of funding 
choose um, that you've hit that, you can identify when these alerts get sent out at a certain percentage, and they'll just automatically be triggered out to the employees on those specific alerts. Uh, so that's a little bit about jobs, um, and, and that's a key piece, right? If you're a contract or project-based manufacturer, making sure that we tie that production process back to the job is key. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on inside of Business Central um, is that ability to track your indirect rates. So again, something that's unique when you sell to the federal government is that sometimes you're doing work for them and it's impossible for you to actually figure out what it's going to cost. And that's why the government came up with this idea of cost reimbursable work. You know, you don't know exactly what it takes. Um, so the government's going to pay for your costs plus the indirect cost of doing business. Then they'll let you add a fee or your profit on top. But the system gives you the ability, you know, to track your rates, both actual and provisional rates. Um, and I mentioned earlier that ability to, to send out your incurred cost submission from the system. Uh, today we've got schedules, I think it's A through H right now. We're continuing to help build on that to improve it for our client base. But that's a critical thing that we've added you know, to make it specific and powerful for a government contractor. Um, the last thing before we get back to our slides, is I just want to touch really briefly on Power BI. And I know we've got a, a webinar coming up on Power BI that we're going to get really deep into it. But specific to the GovCon community, uh, we've got a handful of different views. So this is a set of planning views. So you can look at plan revenue, profit, cost, hours, utilization. Also, what does your indirect rate forecast look like? Um, in the system, you can put in actual work and also planned work. So if I want to look at my planned revenue and say the 100% are the projects we've already won or work we're already doing, but we've got some 75% planned projects, if I add those on, you can see now you know, we've got an updated view. It looks like the senior analyst um, is doing a lot of work on these new projects we might win. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of different views within Power BI that you can leverage, whether it's inventory views, project-related views, um, and again, really best practice for a government contractor um, that are pre-built for you, but you can also add to these as needed. Uh, so that's a, just a little bit, you know, uh, a little taste of what Dynamics is and some of the capabilities around Business Central to run Dynamics. Um, I know, Mark, we've got uh, just uh, another slide or two that we have to close things up and uh, to take some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. And I guess Alex, oh, Alex has already got it up. So, uh, OK. So I think we had a poll there. But this is these are some of the uh, clients that we've worked with. and. Um, you know, all government contractors doing contract-based manufacturing, but, you know, it's interesting to hear sort of what their goals are in the early conversations. Um, you know, they all sort of mirror each other from, from both of these organizations, which, which are non-related, but, you know, they're really looking to get away from multiple islands of databases trying to manage their business. That You know, the one targeted goal is always to move to a single integrated solution set here. And they're trying to improve, right, their reporting uh, capabilities here, their visibility into the operations, uh, improve the user experience, and take advantage of existing Microsoft technologies that they already have investments in. So the organization here at the top had two manufacturing operations, doing 150 million in revenue, and running three different uh, business applications to try to manage things. So uh, we were able to help help them out by bringing them, you know, the GovCon 365 solution set here, you know, helping to manage uh, their business around both, you know, manufacturing and services uh, and time, time entry, financials, um, you know, just helping to improve their operations. 
and the second company, uh, very complex organization here up in the Northeast uh, area here of the uh, US, but $90 million business. Um, you know, they were running GCS and cost point and had been on cost point for, I guess, probably about 15 years or so. So for a very long time, uh, their business was really complex, but right from the get go, they knew that they needed to get into something that would help, um, you know, improve their processes, but also reduce the annual fees that they were spending in the Dell Tech uh, suite of products here. Um, so we're able to help them meet not only their needs from an operational standpoint, um, you know, giving them a better solution to meet all the uh, breadth of their organization here, all the departments, uh, but also, um, you know, obviously save them money in their year over year fees to support the business itself. So. Yeah, and just what, one thing to add on that is, uh, you know, this came from our consulting team and I'll share this with Mark on the call. So these were two great projects and the lead consultant on the one, uh, the company in the Northeast was actually in headquartered in Buffalo, New York. And he told me to tell Mark that, uh, sell projects in Buffalo in the summer, not in the winter. <laughs> and the other one had a production facility down in South Carolina and he had them in South Carolina in the summertime. So for folks all in right. the fall, you get a, a special discount if we can send our consultants to upstate New York in the summertime and down south in the, in the wintertime. So well, uh, I'll, I'll do that then, anything for the consulting team. There you go, absolutely. Yeah, but really two great projects and uh, both successful and um, really helping companies to modernize their business and be able to continue to grow. Um, I know that one of these companies actually just acquired a new, uh, a new business and looking to uh, continue to add as they go. So that ability to do consolidations was critical. Um, and, and when you don't know where um, new opportunities come with the federal government, it's great to be able to have a system that handles manufacturing, distribution, and professional services all in the same application. All right. So it looks like we did get a few questions come in during the webinar this morning. Um, so I will address those to both of you and then whoever wants to answer can go for it. Okay. Um, the first one we've got here says, do you have a way to migrate our legacy data from our existing application currently using Dell Tech cost point? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, since that's a layup, I'll take that one Mark. So, yeah. So, you know, when it comes to migration of legacy data, um, the, the method that we use is Microsoft has something called rapid start. And what that does is it allows us to take any data um, from Excel and import it in. So what we're able to do is we just provide you with a template. And then that template, once it's filled out, we just import it. And whether we want to bring in project data, resource data, GL data, um, you know, pretty much any of those data elements can be imported into this. All right, excellent. Uh, the next question we got in says, can you give me an idea of the length of time and cost to migrate from our existing solution? Well, I'll take that one on, Paul. So uh, that's a tough question, right? So there's a lot of variables that go into, uh, you know, coming up with a project estimate. Uh, you have your license fees, which are based on, you know, users within the, uh, within the software and the areas within the application that they're going to be, um, as well as how complex is the, is the business. And, you know, do they want to deploy their project in a, in a phased type of uh, project delivery or just do a, a big bang deployment? But, you know, we've seen projects here in the mid market that can start, uh, you know, in the 125 to 175 range. And, and we've got projects that can, you know, touch on uh, eight, nine hundred thousand and million million dollar projects. So it really depends. And there's a, you know, obviously a lot of discussions that got to go into, uh, you know, scoping out the project and and uh, and uh, meeting their meeting their needs here. All right, excellent. And then we just have one other question come in. 
Uh, does the system support multiple currencies for foreign national sales? You want to take that one, Mark? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Okay, all right. Yeah, so we didn't show it, but I mean, uh, Business Central is a multi-currency, multi-company system. So you can handle, uh, number one, as many currencies uh, from the sale or purchase side. But one of the things that's unique is you can actually have multiple currencies from a reporting perspective. So we've got some clients that are, you know, German parent or uh, I know we've got a, a Spanish and Italian parent. So they can actually have their uh, system reporting in both US dollars and euros or whatever that native currency is. So not only multiple currencies, but also multiple reporting currencies. All right, excellent. Well, I think that wraps up our webinar today. Um, you can see the Mark and Paul's contact info on screen now. Definitely reach out if you have any further questions about the webinar today. And uh, please tune in for our upcoming Microsoft webinars as well as our other webinars. We've got uh, webinars every week. Um, Thursdays at 10 a.m. You can always count on an Extivia webinar. So please uh, join us for the next one. And uh, Mark and Paul, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Thank Mark. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.